because I believed that I can be a leading man. I believe that I could be another Clint Eastwood or another Burt Reynolds or another Warren Beatty or whatever those characters were, Charles Bronson and so on. I believe that I could be those people. I said, there's enough room on that ladder that I can fit up there. And I looked back again and learned from what I learned in sports. In my case, in bodybuilding. It's all about the hard work that you put in. I said to myself, in bodybuilding, I worked out five, six hours a day. I'm going to do the same thing now for acting. And of course, I went to college to study English. I studied the I said voice, accent removal, acting classes, and all of this stuff, all day long. I worked and I worked and I worked. And within a short period of time, I made one movie called Hercules in New York, which of course went right into the toilet. But it didn't discourage me. I still had the same vision. And then all of a sudden, I did Streets of San Francisco. I did Stay Hungry and Pumping Iron and The Villain. And then all of a sudden, I was asked by Dino De Laurentiis and the Universal Studio, biggest studio, to star in Conan the Barbarian. And after I did Conan the Barbarian, the director at the press conference said to the press, the director was John Milius, he said to the press, if we wouldn't have had Arnold, we would have had to build one. So think about that. The very body that they said can never be sold because the time is wrong. A few years later, I'm doing Conan the Barbarian and it was the number one hit at the box office when it came out in the summer of 82. Think about that. And the director says, if we wouldn't have had his body, we would have had to build one. So all of a sudden, my body became an asset, not a liability. And the same thing was with Terminator. After we were finished filming Terminator, Jim Cameron said to the press, if Arnold wouldn't have had that accent and talked like a machine, I think the movie wouldn't have worked. So think about that. The body and the accent that they attacked was an asset. But I didn't listen to those losers. I didn't listen to them at all. Because that's exactly the way it was in politics again when everyone said no, 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 and it can't be done. And then became governor of California. And this is with everything like that. This is just the reality of it, is, is that you cannot listen to the naysayers. So this is a very important lesson for all of you. So when someone says, no, this is a stupid idea, you in your mind, you don't have to say it, but in your mind, just say this, oh, fuck you, you're an asshole. What do you know? If I would have listened to the naysayers, from bodybuilding to show business to, the, uh, to uh, politics, I would not be standing here today talking to you. I would be in Austria in the Alps yodeling. That's right. I would be in Austria still left yodeling. That's what I will be doing exactly. So this is why I say don't listen to the naysayers. And the next thing, the third point that I'm going to make to you is before we sit down, with Jürgen and talk about the rest of the three is work your ass off. There is no magic bill. There is no magic out there. You cannot get around. You have to work and work and work. I can tell you, I've watched the day for half an hour, Jürgen and his wife that put on this show, this great, great event here. They work their ass off to, to put this together. All year long they work and they work and they work. This does not come together by itself.
For half an hour they were running around and making phone calls and doing this and that and talking to their aides and make sure this is happening, make sure there's the water out there. Talking about water, love water. Make sure of this and make sure of that and all that stuff. So it's work. And it drives me crazy when people say that they don't have enough time to go to the gym for 45 minutes a day and work out. Or to do something for 45 minutes to an hour a day to improve. If it is physically improve or if it is mentally to improve. Imagine you read one hour a day about history. How much you will learn after 365 hours in one year. Think about if you study about the history of musicians, of composers, how much you would know. Imagine if you would work on the business, on some business that you want to develop every day for an hour. Imagine how further along you will go and get. So it drives me nuts because we have, when people say we don't have the time, we have 24 hours a day. We sleep six hours a day, so it gives you still 18 hours. So there's someone shaking their head out here in front to say probably, I don't sleep six hours, I sleep eight hours, right? Or just sleep faster. <laughs> so we have 18 hours a day, the average person works around eight to 10 hours. So let's assume it's 10 hours, so we have eight hours left. Then you travel around an hour a day maybe two hours a day. So now you have still six hours left. So what do you do with the six hours? What do you do with the six hours? Then we eat a little bit, then we schmooze a little bit, talk a little bit to people and all that stuff. But you can see how much time there is available if you organize your day. So you got to work hard. I mean, let me tell you something. When I went to America, I went to college, I went and worked out five hours a day, and I was working on construction. Because in those days in bodybuilding there was no money. We didn't, I didn't have the money for food supplements or anything. So I had to go to work. So I worked on construction. I went to college, I worked out in the gym and at night from 8 o'clock at night to 12 midnight I went to acting class four times a week. So I did all of that. There was not one single minute that I wasted. And this is why I'm standing here today. I became very friendly with Muhammad Ali in the 70s. And Muhammad Ali worked his butt off and I saw it firsthand and I remember that there was a sports rider that was there in the gym when he was working out and he was doing sit-ups and they asked him how many sit-ups do you do and he said I don't start counting until it hurts now think about that he doesn't start counting his sit-ups until he feels pain that's when he starts counting that is working hard. And so you can't get around the hard work, it doesn't matter who it is. As a matter of fact, I believe what uh, Ted Turner said, work like hell and advertise. Do you get it? Work like hell, go to bed, and early, early to rise, work like hell and advertise. So you work your ass off, and then you let the world know about your work. That's what it is all about. Let people know if you have a company, if you have a movie, if you do a sports. Work your ass off, but then advertise and let everyone know. So this is what it is all about. So anyway, so those are the three main rules that I have here for you today, right here. And then the rest of it we talk about when we sit down now. I think that Jürgen said he's going to pull out some chairs, then we're going to talk about the other one, which is, of course, 
And that means that you start thinking about plan B and every thought that you put into plan B, you're taking away now that thought and that energy from plan A. 